Today I'm going over my first impressions of Enshrouded. This is a brand new open world survival action RPG that recently released on Steam Early Access. It's become a breakout hit already, reaching over tens of thousands of players in the Steam charts. It's been doing very well and I'm going to be giving my own experience with the game after a couple hours of playing. I'm going to be giving my perspective from someone who played completely solo. I played a couple hours just by myself with no friends because I know there'll be people out there like me wondering, is this game going to be any fun if I'm playing by myself? Before I start and talking about my impressions on the game and if you should pick it up, one thing I want to let you know is a code was provided for Enshrouded by Keen Games, the creators of the game. They did give me a code, this isn't going to influence or change my opinion on the game, I'm going to give my raw and real thoughts, I do have some criticisms and stuff. Just because I got a code doesn't mean I'm going <laughs> to be nice to it, but once again, thanks to Keen Games. So first off, I kind of want to give you a short description of what Enshrouded actually is. So Enshrouded is an open world action RPG, you might have guessed that by now. <laughs> People might think it's more survival, you know, the game kind of does advertise it as a very survival game, but after a couple hours of playing it, I kind of disagree. It's very much got survival elements, and survival is a big focus, but I'd say it's more of an action RPG than anything else. I came into this expecting something like Pal World or Valheim, and I kind of got something that's a little bit more unique. It's trying to be an open world action RPG with survival second than first, which a lot of games do go for. And I think it's actually very good at what it does. I think it really meshes these really cool standard RPG elements into the survival open world very, very well. And I really wanted to mention this before we got started, because I think a lot of people might not know that. But yeah, the game is very much more, it's kind of got like Souls-like combat, it's got dodge rolling and blocking and parrying for your combat, and it's pretty fun combat overall. It's also pretty difficult early on, you might struggle with it. I just thought it'd be worth mentioning that it's actually a bit more of an action game than it is actually a survival game, then, which is quite interesting, and I think it made me enjoy the game more than I expected. The next thing I want to talk about is just a little fun one. Um, I'll talk about the performance and quality and all that. Uh, first thing, I'm, just gonna, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I'm not really, <laughs> I don't really have the exact numbers or whatever, but um, I'm playing this on like a GTX 1080 and it runs pretty much flawless around 60 FPS, so I'm doing all right with that. Um, fun thing is on the main menu, it'll tell you if your GPU driver's outdated. <laughs> that was a pretty nice touch. <laughs> yeah, um, made sure it made me go update my GPU driver after I finished playing. Um, and also the graphics is weird. Instead of a low, medium, high, ultra setting it just gives you kind of like xbox or playstation settings like you got quality mode or performance mode i don't know what that's about but yeah it's a little weird maybe they're prepping for a console launch or something i don't know the big one character creation i want to make a cool character and i can happily say i think i was able to make a cool character i kind of have like a kind of like a viking inspired guy i named him jim i was gonna go with jimmy but i went with jim um he's just like this cool like, viking guy my only problem with the character creation is the beards <laughs> You got like these little, there's no massive big like viking beard. I know it's not really meant to be a viking inspired game, I could go play Valheim for that, but I don't know, I just want a massive big beard. I want to be a massive cool burly man, but I wasn't really able to. But yeah, I think the character creation seems pretty cool, there's a lot of options, and I do hope they'll expand a little, get more beard, maybe more accessories like eye patches or something, or scars and stuff, I think there could be a little bit more there. But overall, character creation seems cool, but one thing I will say is at the start, your character is really tiny, I don't know what it is. Um, at the start, when I first played the game, like when I first got into and controlled my character, to so see in the footage, my character is tiny. I don't know if it's like a bug or if it's like a design choice, but my character is like it's, it's like it's like he's like four foot three or something. <laughs> like I don't know why my character is like so tiny. Like every, everything else in the environment is massive. I think it's a design choice, but it's just so tiny the characters i found it weird fun thing in this game with the open world actually is the explosives they're really fun <laughs> early on it'll show you that you can pick up these little bomb things and throw it at rocks and it'll deform at, like the terrain so when you throw a bomb in the ground it leaves like a hole it's really really cool because i'm like this is something more survival games should have obviously we all know about minecraft when you explode tnt all the blocks break up it's kind of hard to do that in standard games that aren't block based but i think this is a good solution you know i mean i think it's so cool because if you have a big massive boss battle for example and this boss is slinging like cannons and bombs at you imagine when it explodes in the ground and just destroys the land leaves a hole imagine coming back like 10 hours later and you see all the all this damage from the battle around it seeing the scars of battle i think it could be really cool and also there's just so much like potential there you know i mean you can blow massive holes and make cool cave 
buildings and stuff. I think there's a lot of potential with this. I think it was just cool to mention because it's fun. So next I want to go over my first, uh, my biggest advice after playing for a couple hours, and that is the second you get to build a base, the second you build the flame link thing or whatever the hell it's called, flame shrine, once you build that, go into survival mode and just start building a base. Go around, pick up some sticks, pick up some rocks and thread and string, make all this stuff and make some gear. Because what I did is I placed it and it gave me a new quest, and I assumed this quest was part of the tutorial. I felt very, very wrong because you're going in some not that difficult, but there's a couple enemies that can be kind of difficult and they'll like two hit you. Yeah, go build a base first, build yourself a house, build all that, and then once you've got some armor and stuff, then go out into the open world. Once you, once especially once you've got a shield, a shield is like the most important thing you'll ever need in this game. It is so good. Speaking of building a base, though, I do want to talk about the building, which I was going to go on a big, massive, like long rant about how much I hated it. You'll be seeing in a very, 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 very sped up version. I spent like 10, 15 minutes building myself a house, and I was like. This is so bad. I thought it was one of the worst building systems I've ever used in the game because you can see I'm placing each block block by block. <laughs> like, this took forever. And I was like, what were they thinking? It's like I spent like 15 minutes building my house. I was just like, okay, okay. And then <laughs> you can see it here. I went to the crafting table and I saw the hammer. Okay, I built the hammer. I thought maybe I could like do something with it. Yeah. You can kind of see my camera and the way I'm looking around. Yeah, you can build houses with it. It builds massive big blocks and you can build all these kind of shapes and stuff. So I spent like 15 minutes sitting getting really annoyed about why it's so slow and clunky. Then I realized I did what well, I wasn't doing it right. Big advice, build the goddamn hammer. There is <laughs> The game maybe should have tutorialed you into that because <laughs> otherwise you're going to be like me. <laughs> <laughs> miss the hammer and then you spend like 20 minutes building a goddamn house <laughs> i was really angry by the way <laughs> so i want to talk about the enshrouded part of the game and that is the shroud so once you as you'll see here in these clips you can see this massive fog area that is you know huge fog just covering massive parts of the landscape and it's beautiful i love it that just it just sits there and lingers i love the look of it it's also a very cool mechanic you'll enter and at the start of the game you only have about five minutes in the shroud and there's things that can shorten that time way quicker so you want to be keeping on top of your timer until you can get later into the game and obviously be able to deal with the fog and shroud more i think it's such a unique mechanic that you know it's also hard to see you know i mean your visibility is reduced you're on a timer you're kind of panicking and it's also kind of spooky there's some really good sound design here and just the visuals as well just the limited visibility, good sound design, and you're on a timer, it just all create, combines to create such a kind of spooky experience while you're also kind of panicking to kind of get everything you want to do in these areas done. I think the first couple of times I went in there, I was really, really impressed by just how, how kind of on edge you are, just looking around, see if there's any enemies, make sure I'm not going to kill the enemies, watch my timer, what do I want to do in here, what do I want to find, <laughs> and then you find like a dungeon, and then you have to try clear a dungeon in like two minutes so you can get out. <laughs> It's, it's honestly a really cool mechanic that I think I'm really interested to see how the whole game and with the constant updates and stuff they're going to add to this game and just overall how the later side of the game, you know, once I put more hours into this game, I'm curious how they're going to use this mechanic in interesting ways. I hope they will use it in interesting ways, at least. So I talked about at the start about the skill tree and now let's just dive into that skill tree. Um, you can see here, I really like it. I think the design is really cooler. It's kind of like this spider web, and you can see all these kind of different classes. Well, eh, quote unquote classes. They're not like, you can't, you can go into multiple of these, but obviously, that's not really the plan here, you know? I mean, it's kind of like you can kind of. The blue side's magic, the green's kind of like the rogue archer, red for warriors or whatever. It's kind of like you can kind of go into these different directions. I really like the idea for the skill tree. My only thing is I'd like to see um, the ability to hover over, for example, the trickster class is blue, uh, which I assume means magic, but I I don't know what it does. I'd be kind of nice if you could hover over it and it would kind of give you a small description of what that class kind of does and how their playstyle is. It's just a small thing, but I'd like to see that added. But overall, the skill tree's got some cool things. If you're like a mage, you can like get this thing called blink, which replaces your dodge the teleport it's really cool uh, another big thing is this is the world i really enjoyed walking around the world and a lot of survival games i don't play that many survival games because i don't really like many of them i usually just play i'll play like one or two a year but i've gone from pal world to this so i've actually gone back to back which is very unusual for me but i don't usually play many survival games and one of the big things with survival games is they're you know usually kind of boring procedural generated worlds that are visually light nice to look at but i really like enshrouded i believe i might be wrong on this but i think enshrouded has the same map for everyone maybe some parts are procedurally generated but i'm pretty sure 
is the same map for everyone. At least if it's not, then this might be the biggest praise ever. And that is, I think the world feels amazing. The world is beautiful. It's got the visuals nailed down, which most survival games do, but it also has this sense of being lived in. There's so much like lore you can find around the place, so much buildings, and these buildings just have so much design to them. You know, I mean, you can go in, you can find these little lore books, and then go inside and just look at the furniture, look at these structures. There's so much effort that's gone into making this world feel lived in, but also empty at the exact same time. It's a very well-designed open world. I really enjoyed just walking around, and obviously the shroud mechanic, being enshrouded, is so well done. That You know, you go into these areas, and it's just such a great world. I'm, I just really want to mention how good the open world was. I really enjoyed it. And one of the last things I'm going to mention is the cooking. I just want to point out, I had a lot of fun cooking. Uh, there's like this bit here where you just find a campfire and you can just kind of cook food. I don't know, I found it really cozy and nice just sitting at night, just sitting by the glow of the fire and just cooking some like meat and some mushrooms. I don't know, it was really cool. I just want to mention it and I didn't know where else to put it, so I thought I'd put it at the end. So let's talk about my overall thoughts about Shrouded. Overall, I really enjoyed this game. I'd give it a strong recommendation, as it's honestly a blast. It's got fun, addicting combat with gorgeous visuals and progression that feels rewarding. You're constantly unlocking new tools and equipment, leveling up, unlocking new skills and abilities. This game, I would genuinely say on my behalf as someone who's played a couple hours of it as a solo player, I think it's worth your time and your money. It's in an early access state. It's on a 10% sale at launch if you're watching this when this video comes out. If you're watching it a little bit later, it might be off sale or it might be on a deeper sale. You'll have to check yourself. But I genuinely do think it's worth your money. I had a lot of fun playing this game. Um, I played a couple hours and I'm gonna play more. I have <laughs> you know, um, I wrote up my notes of my impressions of the game and what I want to say. And since then, I've put another like, flip out, another like two hours into the game. I've really enjoyed playing this game and I've had a blast. And I hope you've been able to tell that for the video. I've kind of focused on things I really enjoyed. I had a couple problems. I think so, like the building, I think the tutorial could have led me into how they use the hammer and everything, and I think the skills could be reworked to have like hovering over to tell me exactly what style I'm going into, like well what class I'm going into, and I think the characters can look a little goofy at times with the how small they are. <laughs> the world feels massive, but your character feels so small. I think it's a design decision that I don't really like, but regardless, I really enjoyed it, Shrouded, and my overall opinion is if you're a solo player, which I was, I played Mole. I've been playing for hours now as a solo player, and I don't even plan to play multiplayer. I might get some friends to pick it up with, but as a solo player, I've had hours and hours of fun there, and I think they're only going to keep coming because this is an early access game. It's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and better. And I'm really happy with the game. That's all I've got to say, Baron Shredded. I hope this video has been able to help you to kind of form your own opinion of the game. Um, and hopefully it's inspired you whether or not to buy the game or if it's helped you not spend money. You know, I hope it's been able to help you at least <laughs> form an opinion on the game so you can decide to pick it up for yourself. Or maybe this video helped you decide it wasn't for you. Whatever case it was, I hope this video has helped you at the very least. I've been the Intel, and well, I hope you've had a lovely day.